Hey guys, so I want to make a video about a very important concept, and that's discussing veganism with the loved ones in our life. Now I've yet to meet a vegan who this hasn't been a factor for. Joey Carbstrong recently did a video around this. Highly encourage you to check that out. Much respect for you, Joey. You did an excellent job summing up the topic. In Joey's video, he asked if anyone might know the psychology of what's going on here. Did someone say psychology? And why it's potentially more difficult to discuss veganism with strangers um, than those who are close to us in our lives. So please reply. So I thought I'd make this video because I've got a theory as to why this is. First, I just want to say, Joey, I'm sorry to hear about what you went through with your dad. Um, I went through a similar thing with my dad, and while I didn't fully understand the relationship between diet and disease at that time, um, it was still a very uh, challenging experience. So just wanted to thank you for, for sharing that with everyone. Now, as for the psychology behind the differences between when we communicate with loved ones versus strangers on the street, there's a concept in psychology known as the shame response, which is basically when people feel bad about something and what this means is they may shut down to our message. Now to help introduce this topic further, I'd like to introduce Casey Taft, who has a PhD in clinical psychology. Casey is the primary developer in the first and only programs to stop and prevent domestic violence. He's taken what he's learned from these programs and applied them to vegan advocacy. Here's what he has to say about the shame response. But just by being a vegan, other people can feel guilt or shame. How many of you in the room have just told somebody you were vegan and got a really defensive response in the other person? Raise your hand. Who are saying, for example, well, I don't eat animals that much, or I only eat humane meat, or I'm cutting down, or I don't eat chickens anymore, or that, that kind of stuff. Um, and, or sometimes they get even more hostile and they'll say something like, well, you think you're better than me, don't you? Or, or they'll start to bully or tease you in various ways. So there's a lot of, a lot of head nods going on right now. My theory about why interacting with loved ones is potentially more challenging than interacting with a stranger on the street is because loved ones care what we think. If we say something that's counterintuitive to their way of living, that shame response is potentially more likely to be triggered. It may not even be something we've said, just our mere presence may trigger this response. Now if a stranger on the street talks to you about veganism, you can ignore it and just carry on with your lives. If a loved one's decide to go vegan, it might really make us question some of the things that we're deciding to do in our own lives. That's why I think there's a much higher chance of our loved ones experiencing a shame response. It may be especially tricky to discuss these matters with our parents. They may feel like our veganism is in conflict with the values that they raised us with. In this situation, you may want to explain that your veganism is an extension of those values of kindness and compassion that they instilled within you. There's a chance if our friends and our family aren't being as supportive as we think they could be. This is because they feel like if they're supportive, they're agreeing with us and they might need to explore veganism further. They may not be ready to do this just yet. There's also a whole history of experiences and expectations that you don't have with someone you've just met on the street. And as Casey says, if this response is triggered, they may shut down to our message and it may lead to unproductive communication. It's likely we care more about what our friends and family think too. We want them to see what's happening to these animals and stop supporting it. We want them to believe in the potential health benefits from being a vegan. This is likely to come through in the conversation and it may make it so it flows less naturally, which means it's less effective. Now I've had hundreds of interactions with non-vegans. To help avoid contributing to a shame response, there's a certain process that I like to follow. Now the way I like to respond to non-vegans is a three-step approach. One, praise something positive they're doing. Two, build awareness and make it specific to you. And three is ask an open-ended question, helping lead them to a positive or a vegan conclusion. For example, if someone in your life says, that's great you're doing the vegan thing and that you're feeling healthier, but I could never do it. It's just too extreme and I'd miss cheese. You might like to say, that's great you see the health benefits in going vegan. I, as far as giving up cheese, I was surprised to learn how cruel the dairy industry is and that the male calves are often taken away from their mothers and killed within the first 48 hours of their life. What do you think about the dairy industry? By asking them these open-ended questions, otherwise known as the Socratic method, you're allowing the person to say what they think and it's much less confrontational. By using a Socratic method of open-ended questions, we can help people to think about veganism. My personal approach is to first eliminate the need to eat animals. I do this by asking if people think that they can be healthy without eating animals. Once we've established that we don't need to eat animals, I like to focus in on our strongest point 
what happens to the animals themselves. I like to ask questions about if they think that animals' lives matter. For more suggestions about where you might want to lead your conversations, you might like to hop onto our website and download our free discussion guide, which has a lot more information about the topic. Now, the temptation I've had is to push a little bit harder with um, those close to me in my life because I feel like I've got a relationship with them and I can get away with it. However, if my theory is correct, this shame response is more likely to be triggered in people that care what we think. Now, I was reminded of this quite recently when I sent out a load of messages um, promoting the January to friends and family members. I got a particularly negative response from someone I used to train jujitsu with in New Zealand. Now, we spent years rolling around trying to choke each other out, put each other into arm locks, and he could be a bit of a hard case, so I figured I could push a bit harder than I normally would. And while I was still very positive, I continued to ask those open-ended questions when he wasn't particularly receptive to the message. After four round-trip responses, he sent me a picture of bacon and unfriended me. Now, I don't think I'll ever understand why non-vegans think sending a picture of bacon is worse than the slaughterhouse footage we vegans have seen, but that's another topic. So it's important to try to look for those signs when people aren't necessarily going to be receptive to our message. Look for the body language. If someone crosses their arms or is looking away or itching their head, chances are they're uncomfortable and you might want to either approach things from a different angle or disengage altogether. You can say things like, I'd love to talk to you about this more, but perhaps we should find a different time to do it. Through my outreach work, I have found that there are loads of open-minded people out there. So let's focus our energy on them. As Joey points out with the 100 point system, we're only one piece of the puzzle. Our role is to build awareness in the most positive way possible and hopefully get people thinking about veganism so that when they have other encounters, they can move towards that vegan conclusion. This will help us to avoid focusing on a single interaction or winning, and the result is the conversation will flow much more naturally and be much more likely to have a positive result. James Aspie has a great theory about this. He says to just let conversations flow naturally and wait for the person to ask you a question. When they do, respond to something that helps lead the conversation towards veganism. People are much more likely to engage on this basis. Now it's important to remember that we create our own social world. We might find that our vegan family outside of our biological family helps us with this. Now using some of these techniques has helped me to inspire my sister to go vegan, my mom who's just turned 70 to go vegan, and I found that the biggest thing is being calm, patient, and continuing to build awareness relevant to that person. Now, I may have only been 30 to 40 points of that move towards veganism, but that's an important part of the puzzle. Now, if family members aren't being particularly respectful, the temptation might be to get angry and have an emotional response. Now, what I would encourage you to do is to get in touch with your underlying feelings and instead try to communicate why some of the things they say make you feel sad. Talk about why being around non-vegan food makes you think about some of the videos you've seen and it makes you feel uncomfortable. If you can communicate to family members how their actions are making you feel, you're much more likely for them to understand where you're coming from. While it may be tempting to give up on friends and family members, we can still inspire change. We just have to be strategic about it and look for those opportunities where the person is the most open-minded. Remember that the people closest to us in our lives are the people that we have the most influence over. Even if your family doesn't decide to go vegan, hopefully they can at least appreciate what you're doing and support you. I hope you enjoyed hearing my theory about why I think talking with loved ones is more challenging than, than strangers on the street. So what do you think? Do you think friends and family members are more likely to feel shame and shut down to our message when we're discussing veganism with them? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for all you do for the animals. And just remember, if you're in one of those tough interactions with loved ones, your V-Gang's got your back. See you in the next video. So my theory, so my theory, so my, ah, oh, that's, I'm trying. So my theory, so my theory about, my theory. My theory, my theory, my theory, my theory behind why speaking with loved ones might uh, be more difficult um, than speaking with ones. Uh, oh my gosh.